Hi, I'm Herm Kelly. We're here today with a young horse. Her name is Josie. She was pretty frequent in our videos her yearling year and pretty absent her two-year-old year. To explain, she had an eye problem, uh, allergy-related eye problem, and wound up at the University of Pennsylvania for two months for treatment. She's come through that really well, but it made last year not very feasible to start her. So I celebrated her recovery by needing a big surgery on my shoulder, which made me pretty non-feasible for this year. So I turned to my friend Melanie, who helped me out last summer, we worked together last summer, starting her two-year-old here, and asked if she would start this filly this spring. She's willing. We're sort of trying to get the relationship between them going at this point. This filly is, or mare at this point, is what I call a trust horse or a relationship horse. She will do anything for you if she trusts you, and it's very important that she feel comfortable with you. So I feel like I could do anything I want with her, but she might be a little more uncertain with somebody else. So we're sort of rebuilding a bond here between the two of them to replace the one that I established when she was young. Hopefully not replace, but then she'll have two human friends. So that's our goal. We're gonna start out with some round pen work and I'm gonna sort of talk Melanie through some things here because she doesn't have a round pen and last year was the first she really used one. This gives us the opportunity to work on the horse and maybe work on Melanie's skills as well. She's promised to be a good sport. I think she will be. So let's start things off. You want to just let her move over onto the fence. Now we use a standard lunge whip for this, but we try real hard not to overuse it. Yeah, so just sort of let her move herself around there a little bit. And she's gonna wanna play a little, that's okay. And what we wanna do after she goes around a little bit and gets herself established, is to see if she'll go over on the fence, maybe just a little more consistently. And after we've got that lined up, we'll probably ask her to stop and then turn and go the other direction. So you'll see that there's a consistent place where she comes off the fence. So right before that place, just put a little pressure on her, not much. There you go, just enough that she is not comfortable coming off the fence. So you're not putting her on the fence, you're just making her more comfortable with being on it. And right about there, the next time around, if she's not being foolish, I would go around another time, let her sort of get this foolishness straightened up. Yep, don't push on her, just let her lope herself down and begin to trot. Now see if you can step forward and catch her eye to where she looks at you. Okay, so you need to cut her off and send her back the other way. Yeah, don't need to be real aggressive. So about now, step, there. And you don't need to send her on. What I really like is for her to turn and stand, to face and stand, but that was way better. And what you did different, Melanie, that time was you stepped up a little sooner so she had a little more time to process that message. So about the time she gets to this bit larger green gate than she just passed. Right before she gets there, take a step this way, catch her eye, and see if she'll turn and look in. Right about now, slowly. Turn her back, let her go around a time, and make your move a little sooner and a little slower. <clears throat> I'd let her go around a time, because she's She's a fairly high energy horse, and that's, that's gonna be good. 
There you go. I like that she's asking you what to do. Now, about now, step. Slow, slow. Mel, if you were as old and crippled as me, you'd have your speed just right. Now, cut her, take her back, not real aggressively, but she turned the wrong direction there. Okay, just let her wind herself down like that. Right about now, make your move. Cut her off. And in fairness to Melanie and the horse, this filly's only had this done a time or two. It's been done by me. <coughs> and inevitably, everybody's style is a little different. Keep her moving. Keep her now. Slowly walk toward that green gate. Slowly. There you go. There you go. Yep. And she wanted to sort of leak in, and you did the right thing sending her off, but not doing it aggressively. <clears throat> that turn in is the beginning or a symptom, let's say, of what we call draw. She's drawing towards you. If she turns toward the fence, that's more a drive away type situation. And it can, there, let's see if she'll stand. There, now, let her soak there for a minute. These horses that have energy, it's great to let them stand and blow. The ones that want to stall, they're the ones you send on through right away so that they don't just learn to, to stall out. And I just sort of cut her off. And you can just take your whip and hold it up in front of you and just sort of block her with it. Just sort of hold it like it's a, I don't know, like you've got a barbell in your hands. Right like so. Yeah, and just step up and see if she'll turn in. There you go, now see if she'll stand. A blocker with that, that, there you go. Well, she's relaxing. Well, we've got a water hazard now. Okay, just send her off the other direction. Yep. And it can be, that's exactly right. You don't need to hustle her off, just direct her off. And if she wants to come off there, what magnet is she going to? The gate. The gate. And if I was going to let my ego talk, she might even be coming over to see me. I'm not sure of that, but I'll but I'll make that representation, why not? Just watch, she's gonna come off. There you go. That was good timing, she came off a little bit, but you wanna sort of put a little pressure on a couple of strides before she wants to come off, because once she started coming off, yeah, you didn't necessarily ask for that, but I'm okay with her offering that. Now block her. Yep, because she was starting to leak towards you. Nothing wrong with her coming in when you ask her to. That's a good thing. But you don't want her just offering to do that herself. So send her off softly the other direction. There you go. And what you did that was real good there was you gave her a little cluck. You used your hand. You didn't use the whip automatically. You gave her a chance to do it right without adding that correction. And that was good. Now she, just send her back the other way. Take your time. You want her to walk back.
And this time, you can let her, she just chose a direction. Walk her past that green gate because she's been stopping there each time. So don't let her just always pick her rest spot. And this time, about the time she's getting past the green gate, just step up, catch her eye, and let her turn back. There you go. She can stand there, that's okay. So let's turn her the other direction and see if she's relaxed enough that she'll lope a trip or so around. And you can just let her extend into the lope. You don't need to jam her up into it. Just ask her to step up, step up, step up. There you go. And I don't want to be too goal oriented, but see if she'll give you most of a trip around. and maybe stop her and let her turn in. Now the thing you'll notice, and it makes sense, she's got some of the fresh off of her now, so stopping and turning in is starting to look like a pretty good deal to her. So just give her a point with your hand, cluck to her, see if she'll walk off the other way, and ease her up into a lope this way. So we're seeing she'll use both leads, that's a good thing. And we're seeing that she's still pretty fresh and there she fell out of lead, that's not a big thing if she wants to trot a step and get it. And just when you're ready, let her turn and come back in. Or not come back in, but just turn in. Good. Now drop your stick. Well, I'll tell you what, keep your stick up. Pick your stick up. Gently walk out to her and rub her with that stick. Because we want her to know that that's not a threat. Take your time. She's facing, facing you, trying to be good. Just take that stick. And if she wants to rotate around you a little, that's okay. Just take that real non-threatening and just rub her with it. Because right now, it's not a whip, it's not a stick, it's just a piece of plastic. Folks who are watching this may notice this filly's not perfectly groomed. She was a lot rougher when we brought her in from the field this morning. She hasn't had much handling except for doctor and her eye periodically for the last several months. So we scrubbed off all the mud we could scrub off and this is the end result. But we'll give her a few months, I think she'll look pretty nice. To me, she looks like a horse who spent the winter out and had a good time should look like. Now see if you can work your way gently to the other side. Go around her front. See, it's important that we can do this with her not restrained. You could absolutely do this with a halter on and she just stand there and take it. Here, she's accepting it. It's her choice. And it's always nice to have these horses making the right choice for you. So we see one thing, she prefers to have you out of her left eye compared to her right eye. That's very common. A lot of horses like the left eye because we work off the left so much. Yeah. 
and just go ahead and drop that stick. What we want to see, step around her and see if she'll step her hindquarters away from you. Don't go too fast. So she spiraled a little bit, but that's fine. Now step across into her left eye and just step right back, right where that whirl of hair is and cluck. There you go. Again, if she wanted to leave you, she could. So we're relying on the connection that we're building here. Yeah, and that's long and loose, but that's okay. That's, that's a good start. Try her the other way. It'll be interesting to see how she is out of this less preferred eye. She may be more responsive. Now, step toward that whirl. Don't walk away from her. There you go, there you go. All righty. So the last thing that's always good to do, let's see if we can pick up her feet without having her haltered. And if you want to get her, she's, well, there, there you go. I was thinking the other foot might be easier because it's forward, but she seems happy with it. And again, a lot of times this is all about having your horse ready to do this stuff. So if we had brought her right out and said, let's pick up her feet, might not have gone so well. But now she's sort of hooked on, she's relaxed, and she's not going to leave us. You do this the wrong time and in the wrong way, you may find yourself face down in the sand. That's why I have Melanie doing it instead of doing it myself. I would do back feet too. And back feet are always a little higher degree of difficulty. Go around, I would do the uh, left first. I don't know why, but I would. Now there's a good in stride place for her to lift that foot right there. Good. And that little bit of wiggle, of course we'd rather not have that, but what she didn't do was leave you. So let's pick up the other one. Okay, so that's a good round pen session, and it's plenty long enough. You don't want to stress your horse or bore your horse to death in the round pen. So here, she's had enough time in there. She's made good progress. We're on a good note, a good note. So we're just going to say, let's do something else with her, and we'll move on to another lesson outside the round pen. Hope this was helpful. It's just a little bit of real time, real life again, uh, working with a young horse. See you next time.